Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm here to share with you our interview from Queen Pins. We had the chance to chat with filmmakers and Kristen Bell and Kirby Howell Baptiste of the new film out in select cinema theaters September 10th and streaming on Paramount Plus September 30th. It is a super entertaining film, definitely not for kids, but grab a friend, grab a date, grab your tickets now and stay tuned for the rest of the interview. Hi! Hi, Kristen. Hi, Kirby. Hi. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with us all today. We were saying before we jumped on with you that you guys are, you ladies are like the Walter White of couponing. And we wow. found ourselves cheering for you, even though we know we shouldn't have been. I so, love that reference. Yes, so you are the breaking bad of, of the coupon world. So the movie talks about that coupon high that shoppers get after the sale. So do you have any experience that is in your life that you can compare that to? Shopping in sales, going to outlets. I mean, outlets is just, it's like everyone's walking around high in an outlet. Because we're just high so like excited. <laughs> because it feels right. It feels like no one else is going to get that deal. But yeah. you know, outlet centers, even when you pass them on the highway, oh my God. even when you know you can't go, you're still like, <laughs> what deal. do I need in there? <laughs> you two um, have a great friendship and connection in this movie. If you could describe that friendship in one word, what would it be? movie um trust supportive yeah yeah if you had all that money that your characters had to spend what would be the most like outrageous thing you would buy first i honestly when i think about having a lot of money i think about what i can do with it that to me is almost like the only point of having ex excessive amounts of money is what you can do with it for other people so honestly if i was to just like drop into a 40 million dollar fortune the first thing i would do would be buy my mom a house buy my brother a house put money away for put like large amounts of money away for my niece and nephew and then probably just like maybe hire somewhere like i don't know rent a boat and bring all my friends on it and have a good time like similarly to chris i think i think money is best spent on experiences rather than things so that's what i would do i would i'd go all out on the experiences experiential spending is the only way I do it well but also I'll say like I, I am overpaid and I have a savings account and I agree with Kirby like I am trying to rake it in as fast as I can because I feel like I've got a really good barometer of what to do with it and I have bought family members houses and I feel really proud of that because I feel like it's a a, a responsibility that I take on um, willingly, but also like there are a ton of organizations that I support monthly that I really do believe in that I'm like, yeah, great. I have and it, I have an unbelievable amount of opportunities in front of me and I'm overpaid. Like, why not just like bring it and then you let me do what I need to do when I'm spacing it out. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? I'll move it around the way I think it needs to be moved around because I trust myself. But I do, I will say as far as um, experiential spending and protecting spending, but also I'm a really big fan of finding the like perfect gift for someone. I have like a, a, a file in my phone that if someone will like mention something, I'll like quickly write it down. And then like, whether it's their birthday or not. Or randomly, I once got another text from Kristen um, that said, do you like matcha? And that was the end of it. And I said, of course I like matcha. And the next day, a matcha maker came to my house and I now have like professional matcha at my house. So she is a very good gift giver. I wanted to know, uh, tell us maybe a funny story from the set, maybe one of your favorite days. This group likes to laugh, so we want to hear it. <laughs> um, one of my favorite days, um, I don't think it's going to cause, wait, were you, were you thinking about the Lamborghini one? I'm thinking Wait. the Lamborghini one or the post uh, Thanksgiving one. Thanksgiving. When you, when you, they said rolling. Oh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Can we talk about that? I don't care. Okay, so we had, a, it was after Thanksgiving, so we'd all been away for Thanksgiving, but actually everyone was very, very responsible and could like only spend, like there are people who like didn't even spend Thanksgiving with their family because we had to come back to the show, to the movie, and we like, it was, you know, we're in the height of, of the pandemic and right. things were tense. But um, Kristen and I were talking about 
bowel movements. And uh, I was sharing some struggles because post Thanksgiving, we were five days post Thanksgiving and oh. and I was like, I don't know what to do. So we're on an air a tight airplane, shooting on an airplane, and there's seven crew members in here, all guys, one girl. Yeah. And we're whispering and I'm like, I just don't know. Like I've tried to like relax and I've gotten up early and I'd have had a little call. I just feel like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden they call rolling. Everyone quiets Go down silent. and Kirby says fairly loudly. If you don't poo by tomorrow, I need you to go to the doctor. <laughs> and that was literally like on a mic, hot mic, <laughs> everyone on the entire set heard <laughs> conversation. Like, you know, normally everyone's just like busy doing their thing. So no yeah. one's yeah. like chatting, whatever. And even the sound department have the mics off until you're going. And literally <laughs> in the most silent in the moment from when they say rolling, just before they say the word action, I was like, I need you to go, go to the <laughs> That should have been in the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so awesome for sharing that, Kristen. That's awesome. It happened to everybody. It happens to everyone. Everybody. Oh, it, and I hope it happened for you. It did. <laughs> okay, that's good news. I love the movie. I think the thing that I was most fascinated with both of you as Connie and Jojo um, is one, do you relate to each of your characters? And two, were you both crazy couponers prior to this movie? Or did you have to do some very in-depth research to get ready to be Connie and Jojo, the ultimate couponers? So I, we both have said we definitely use coupons. I don't have like a history. We don't really have this whole, this couponing thing. This, how, how big it is, is very culturally American. But Kristen definitely is like, no, she's no stranger to the game of couponing. Well, because my grandmother was an extreme couponer, like mm. was a, a real one. Like she, you know, in the basement of my grandparents' house, there were, the perimeter was lined with like beautifully sliced off, evened cardboard boxes. And inside were just hundreds of UPCs from different companies. She'd separate them. Our entire extended family was responsible for sending the soup can, uh, UPCs and the um, toothpaste and the cereal and all the barcodes. She'd gather a hundred of them from one company, send it in, say, look what a loyal customer I am. They'd say, thank you so much. Here's $5 cashier's check. And with those checks, she, over the course of many, many years, those tiny checks, she started college funds for her five grandchildren. I'm curious to know, Kristen and Kirby, have you ever done something that perhaps is considered unethical, but was for the betterment of someone else? I mean, that does that poop story we just told you? <laughs> <laughs> we, want, we want to make you laugh, but is it unethical? <laughs> it's like a, it's a <laughs> um, I, I probably would say not unethical. I think that I think perhaps mildly illegal to me. Uh, I I hold ethics at a higher standard than legality because I think yeah. like right. I realize like just the other day. I mean, people, almost everybody breaks the law every single day. If you're driving in, if you're doing forty in a thirty zone, you're broken the law. You're technically being a criminal. So to me, ethics are different. Like I don't think I would, I believe very much in ethics. It's it would be more like Oh, if someone if someone was like, oh man, I I really want a donut right now. Will you just grab that donut from I don't know wherever? I'd be like, sure, whatever. If you need it, I got you. She's such a good time. <laughs> I, can, I only feel like well, look. I mean, I've been under a microscope for quite some time. I can't get away with a lot of illegal stuff. <laughs> right. But yeah. normally, because I'm like I'm like too verbal diarrhea honest. Because I like I like to sleep. <laughs> night and I talk so much I gotta get things off my chest but I have definitely look this is subjective I suppose but I have in the face of true need been um had emotionally strong-armed my friends or family for example driving home from school my kids got a bar they're about to open in the back seat I drive by a homeless person I'll snatch it out of my kid's hand and hand it to the homeless person at the light. And even if my kid cries, we'll use it as a teaching lesson of like, you're gonna get food in 10 minutes. We don't know when that person can get food or they're, you know what I mean? You'll get food in 10 minutes, so chill. And some people might, you know, call Child Protective Services or something. I, don't know. <laughs> I was telling the group that I actually went back and read some of the stories and news articles um, 
from the women that um, were involved in this kind of scheme. And I wanted to find out, um, like, were you aware of this of this whole story before you signed up to um, be a part of the film? And if not, like, what kind of compelled you to want to be involved? Uh, so I had no, uh, neither of us, uh, Chris has been attached to the project for longer than I have, but I think I'm correct in saying that neither of us had any idea about this story before the script was presented to us. Uh, and it is, huge and i don't know how particularly because it was in 2012 that this happened which is you know not that long ago but long enough ago that we weren't in the cycle we're in now of such immediate news and such fast news so it is extremely it was so interesting to me that this was something this was a story that had almost been deliberately silenced um and that that was to me like absolutely why I wanted to be part of this story and 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 have it heard. It's pretty remarkable what they did. I mean, of course, it de definitely toes the line of of um, it's not legal. I don't know if it's unethical. I definitely know it's not legal. But I think that these women, at least the women that we play in this movie, are trying to better their own lives and the lives of the 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 lives of the people around them without causing any sort of direct hurt or pain to any other individual. I didn't know anything about this news story and I couldn't believe that I didn't, but it is an actor's dream to receive a script where the, the front page says based on true events or based on a true story. And then I also just loved the, Aaron and Gita are directors. They, they add such unbelievable specificity to their storytelling and they're saying so many things by like, you know, just the fact that they were like, okay, how do we get you, yeah, to root for these women who are about to participate in something illegal? Okay, well, let's give them really relatable storylines. People who struggle with infertility, whether you've ever struggled with infertility, you can imagine how hard that could be. And you immediately have some empathy there. Um, think a little bit about the Olympic athletes we all just watched that we put on a pedestal for a number of years and then completely ignore the rest of their lives, who often have a lot of trouble paying their bills, who have worked literally to represent America on a world stage, and we just completely disregard them. And so they were representing like that story and also the story of being in, um, in a marriage that wasn't serving you at all and you knew you wanted to get out of but having no financial way to do it because your financial education wasn't really there or you you finally figure out a way and you go to the person you have chosen as your family member like the idea of chosen family and can these girls support each other to do to accomplish their dreams together and how far will they let each other go um just everything about it was so specific and beautiful on top of the fact that they were based on real events because these women they laundered $40 million. I know you just talked about, you know, obviously how these, this came from true events and everything. Were you able to talk with the ladies that your character is based on? And did you sympathize with them in any way? We didn't get to interact with them at all. They, because they're, again, when we were trying to make the film, I think that Aaron and Gita took a lot of liberties in the storytelling of who these characters were in order to get you to invest in them emotionally. So they added a lot of fictional layers into the women's lives, but the story of what actually happened is true. So, but no, we didn't get to interact with them. Um, I wanted to talk about the physical demands for the role. Kristen, you playing a race walker and Kirby, you had that epic little victory dance number in the film. Was that something you had to prepare for? Was there choreography for you, um, Kirby, or were you able to just go and walk and dance your heart out for that? Um, I had I had a choreographer um, work with me. I'd done um, uh, actually during during I discovered this choreographer because of because I think both the um, upside and the downside of the pandemic is you know your usual things and places were closed and you had to find alternatives. And I did this dance class in Griffith Park, and uh, I fell in love with the choreographer. And I all I would never have paid myself as one of those people that was doing like an out a workout in the middle of a park like with a bunch of people watching you but it was so fun and when this part in the film came up I was like oh if I could recreate that feeling of just dancing with abandon that would be amazing so I used um the same choreographer for that um uh, to do my one so I wish I could say it was just all me off the cuff but no I I had to practice that dance <laughs> And I did, there were uh, even more race walking scenes in the movie that didn't end up making it in there uh, in the final cut, but learning how to race walk, I was trained by a, a former Olympic athlete who was a race walker and that I 
very few things I've tried in my life have been that hard. I, it looks so goofy and I can recognize that. And she knew that when she was, she's like, this is gonna look funny. You gotta do this with your hips, but here's how your feet should be. It is one of the most intense levels of cardio I've ever done. But <clears throat> the reason it is, is because it's like a, a sprinter is just giving their all and um, a, a long distance runner is using the, um, the, what do you call it? stamina muscles but in race walking you're actually using both you're using sprinting muscles and stamina muscles it is very difficult but you both kirby i would have completely believed you if you just said you made it up right on the top right up, one take that was it <laughs> i wanted to know what was your favorite part um during the taping either behind the scenes or something that actually made it into the movie Actually, do you know one of my favorite parts that I forgot was when we, we a, a big chunk of the scene got cut out, but was the, was the sushi restaurant and we just had, could sit and eat sushi that uh -huh. night. That was very fun. Yes. <laughs> there, well, look, it's, it, it sincerely is hard to pick a moment because being on set with Kirby, because we're actually friends, every moment is kind of fun. Like there weren't like a bunch of dull parts because you're getting to hang out with a real friend. But like, I think I particularly liked We'd been shooting the movie for a few weeks. We knew what our dynamic was. We like working together. We're passing the ball, trying to make it as funny, as real as possible. Enter BB Rexa, who changes the comedic dynamic completely because all of the sudden she is in, she's the expert, tech expert we go to, helping us move our money. And we are like these little idiots who are asking her questions. And we were able to find like funny improvs and just the dynamic shift happened because prior to that, we were sort of ping-ponging, figuring out like, okay, who's going to be the straight person in the scene and who's going to have the goofy moment because you kind of have to balance it if you're going to stay grounded. But with those scenes with BB was really fun because we could both sort of just be goofballs. Yeah. She was the, like the voice of reason. I was just wondering for each one of you, is there a part of your character that you identify with in real life? Oh, wow. I mean, at, at moments, sure. Like, but in different ways, I think like there are, it's hard for me to say, cause I didn't struggle with infertility, but man, have I spent moments of my life imagining what it might be like and having an intense amount of empathy for women that struggle with it. And then thinking, gosh, we should be talking more about that. I should ask my friends if everything's okay, if they're struggling with infertility, like all those kinds of things. And then I, I am obviously not in a marriage that makes me feel completely stunted, but I do relate to Connie in, in the idea that like, I didn't grow up with much financial education. I mean, I think I did, but when you enter into adulthood, we should be educating kids very, very differently about savings and money and um, investments, especially girls, because mm -hmm. like it, that example of like, she can't get out of this marriage until she's got herself together is all too true for so many women. Um, I'd love to know, what do you hope women watching will learn or get from this film? Um, I would say, <laughs> as Kristen has perfectly reminded me, well, I would say that what I hope women take away from it is the idea that if you have been, even if you feel like you have been discounted or discarded, you having the opportunity and seeing that you can take your, your sort of destiny in your own hands, you can take your life into your own hands. And if things, if you were dealt a certain set of cards, you have the ability to, to change it. I think you just have to have the confidence to know that that is within you, that you can sort of strive for better that you deserve better and that you can you can get the things that you want and get the things that you need i don't know if i said it as yeah well. you okay, did well you. and also she had said before like and you can do that with chosen family like don't be afraid of chosen family don't feel stunted by the people around you like that it's something that's huge in my life and it's big in jojo and connie's life and and with chosen family and the abil the the sort of inner strength you really can accomplish your dreams. It might not be this one. It might not be a $40 million illegal empire, but whatever it is, just the steam to go for it. Yeah. Uh, both of your characters are like committing these crimes yet both like so relatable and lovable. Can you talk about like being able to create that dynamic? Yeah, I think when you start a, a, a script out with some sympathetic facts about someone, and you and you see that they are innately good and then you give them someone around them that they treat well like 
our relationship is admirable. It's like, I, you can tell that Connie loves Jojo and Jojo loves Connie. By minute 20, you can let them do anything and, yeah. and people will root for them. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think that's the that's the, the basis. That's why you root for them is because you see that they are doing something that is beyond themselves. And I think we can all relate to that. When you are trying your best, not just for you, it's not about centering yourself. It's about improving the lives, not only of yourself, but of the people around you. I would love to know what about the story or the project itself made you want to be a part of it? I got a text from Kristen at night that said, do you like working with me and can you do an American accent? And I said, yes to both. And she was like, okay, I'm sending you a script. So she sent me this script and I read it and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's like nothing I'd ever read before. And this kind of comedy really appeals to me as well. It's like, it's a buddy comedy, but it's grounded and it has a message and it touches on all these themes that I had never seen before. And then on top of it, knowing that I would work with someone that I'm so comfortable with and so fond of. And, and I mean, to work with someone who can text you at night and be like, the, essentially the most cryptic text, <laughs> and you could be like, yes, I'm gonna commit six months of my life to this. You know you're in good hands. <laughs> Thank you guys so incredibly much for taking the time. The movie is both fascinating and fantastic. So thank you guys so much. And thank you to all the parents taking your time out from picking up your kids from school to hang with us today. Bye, baby. Bye, you guys. Bye, you guys. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Stories. Bye. Bye. Bye.